Hi guys, this is Jason Zak from Nathaniel School of Music. In this lesson, we are going to basically look at how you can take simple arpeggios and how you can get them to create a lot of impact and improve the emotion which you want to convey to your listeners, of course. So along with learning these arpeggios, we are going to do them in two time signatures with a lot of variations. And I'm going to teach you an interesting chord progression compared to, you know, how arpeggios are generally taught, which is sometimes just one chord or a one four five or a one five six four even I, I i've gone through a few lessons with just the usual cheesy pop stuff in this lesson we'll take a nice progression as what you heard in the intro performance so i'll teach you the chords first then i'm going to show you the arpeggio pattern and what makes it unique what is the general logic and the goal here is we will give you a few variations but you also have to have the technique to develop your own after this lesson is over and that's also my hope uh, with this lesson so before we get started with the lesson it'll be awesome if you could consider going to our patreon page supporting us for a minimum of five dollars a month and you get all my handwritten notes staff notation backing tracks and midi wherever applicable and you can also so feel free to hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell icon for regular notifications so that you don't miss a single video which we have in store for you. Let's get cracking. So the chords first. First chord is C minor. Now I'm going to show you this in three different shapes just so that we get a good chord workout as well. And if you wish, you could pause the video, get your keyboards out and learn with me. You can play along with me in this lesson. I'll be slowing it down and you'll see the learning angle as well, which will be quite helpful as well as the notation. So you go first chord C minor. I'm playing in a lower form starting with G, C, E flat. So C minor. Second chord would be A flat major and all I'm doing for that is moving my thumb up to play A flat and moving my left hand down to play the root A flat. C minor, A flat. The third chord is F minor sixth. You could also call this as a D minor seventh flat five. So an F minor sixth and a D minor seventh flat five are cousin chords. They are the same notes basically but they have different personalities so this would be the f minor sixth chord how do you form a minor sixth it's a root the minor third perfect fifth and the major sixth the minor sixth has a major sixth on top so you need to keep that in mind and this could so easily become a d minor seven flat five you just have to play d in the bass and there we go becomes a minor seven flat five which is a which is a diminished chord actually okay so let's do the three chords again in this voicing c minor a flat major f minor sixth and then i like this voicing of g seventh it's a rootless voicing in the right hand you don't have the root but you have the root in the left hand so F, B, D, so that's seven flat, th three, and then your five. And it works well on the fingers, I think. Your hand will be just in this region. So let's do that again. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Now bringing my middle finger into play and playing that D with the F bass. And now dropping my index to B and bringing my thumb to F. Or you could do it with other fingering if you wish. These are just what I'm doing. And A flat. I'd like to use my ring on top there for some reason. Middle. And then bring back your ring if you want for the last chord. Now you can play these chords in different shapes. So let's try them out. Starting from the root position of C minor. So that would be C minor. flat major which is just moving the ring finger to a flat a flat major now here's where you could have some fun you could do c d a flat which would be that same f minor 6th in this way c d a flat 
Or check this out. What if you wanted to make it D minor seven flat five? Bring in the other cousin. Then you don't need the D in the right. You don't need the D in the right hand because you already have D in the left hand. So you can play an F minor in a second inversion in the right. Just keep the F there. C F E flat. If you want a D in the bass, or if you prefer the F in the bass, you can do C D E flat. So so far we have C E flat G, C E flat E flat. And then uh, I'm doing C D E flat, or I could do I could do a D bass and then play. C F E flat, and then the last chord would be a G seventh, which I am playing, trying to play without the G. D F B without the G. There's no G, so that's D F B, and then let's do it again. You can even play G seventh like this. You can play a B diminished in your right hand, or you could just do it as D F B. That's a nice way. Okay, and now coming to the third voicing strategy, you can do E flat G C like this or like this. You could finger it. E flat G C, then A flat major. E flat A flat C, and now. I like this shape, especially when you're playing a D in the bass. This would make it a D F E flat C, D minor seven flat five. Or if you wish to do F in the bass, you can do. You can avoid the F and do A flat C D or D A flat C, and then G. You can do. D F B or you can even suspend it. La da if you wish. It's a nice shape to play that. Makes it quite choral in nature. You can hear each voice moving well. So let's play that voicing again. Minor. D minor seven flat five. And then the other voicing, root position, A flat, C E flat, E flat in the right, and then you do uh, love this voicing, C D E flat with an F in the bass. You can do a sus, and then resolving, and then the original voicing which I showed you, G C E flat. A flat C E flat. Now F in the bass. A flat C D F B D. One more time. G C E flat C minor. A flat C E flat A flat major. A flat C D F minor sixth. G, F B D G seventh. Okay. So that's about the harmony. That's about the chords and so on and so forth. Now coming to a very interesting arpeggio concept, which I think will benefit your playing. So let's just say you you want to play this stuff, all these four chords which you've learnt now, as arpeggios. So what would be a normal thing which people do? You can either go one by one, starting from the top. It's a nice way, or you could go from the bottom and just play the arpeggios in a kind of smooth manner. This works very well, but a nice way to add impact, especially to ballads, rock songs, and anything you want to. to add some bite to where you want the piano to really stand out would be to just continue to do whatever you're doing which is let's start with just high i'm calling it as high middle low 
middle and we are taking one chord just c minor for now high middle low middle high middle low middle now while we do this check this out the first hit i want to have an impact or rather i want to have an impact at the down beats so i will play the extreme notes the low note and the high note together only at that one point so and then it continues so i could choose to do or i could choose to do lmhm still but L with a H and then what I like is high, middle, low, middle. So it makes the one stronger. You don't even need the left hand. There we go. So it's almost like a chord played in block style and high hy and hybriding with the. arpeggio it's a block with arpeggio going together hand in hand and why are we playing block to just add the impact at the beat 1 there we go impact at beat 1 clearly right do it for all your chords only at beat 1 now at beat 1 and beat 3 which i think is cool or you can just do beat 1 only at 1 you can feel only one uh, standing out isn't it you could do it at beat 1 and 3 1 e t 1 depends on also how you count it if i count these as 16th notes 1e and 2e and 3e and 4e and it may be too long so then i could do 1e and 2e and 3e and 4e and 1e and 2e and 3e and 4 if i count this as quavers or eighth notes 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 depends on how you count it i guess the faster you play i guess you go into the semi quaver or the 16th world and the slower you play you go into the eighth note or the quaver world quavers you could say so if i do quavers stressing at beat 1 only 1 so only one might be a bit boring now that we have a fair grip on this technique let's do beat 2 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 you can even do beat 3 2 and 3 4 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 1 and 2 most people will do one uh, generally with this technique let's do one and three e 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 if you do one and three it goes with the pattern also There we go. Or you could just do one and four. Four. You can pretty much do any beat, but now you need to be a bit clever. So let's say you're doing only beat one and beat four. One and two and three and four and four. So you have to keep in mind at four. I need to play this dyad or the block of two notes. So where I, wherever you want to phrase that particular chord or that arpeggio pattern, you can then play a dyad. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Together. One, two, three. Together. Three, four. and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 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 and 1 
है वन एंड टू एंड थ्री एंड फोर सो नाइम डूइंग थ्री एंड फोर stress to any beat and why stick with just beats you can even do sub beats so sub beats would be maybe the end of the two you can start focusing on the end of the two check this out so i'll stress on the one and the end of the two so one and two and three that's the end of the two one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four we'll do one and the end of two one and two and three and four and one and two and three let's see how that goes now so one and two and three and four one and two and three and four so you'll have to reorder your arpeggio a bit it'll be impact impact and what is no impact so an impact in the arpeggio is where you play two notes together no impact is where you play one note at a time okay one and two and three and four and one and two and i'm whacking it together and four oh. slowly with our chords again and why not also stress on the four you get a nice tresio what we call as tresio So let's not just focus only on 4 by 4. I have some 3 by 4 also for you, and let's see how far this can take us. This idea of impactful arpeggios. So if you do this over three, first of all, one, two, three, one, two, three, and if we divide that three, depends on how we divide anything really. Any time signature has beats. One, two, three, and sub beats. So it can be one and two and three and one and two and three and, or it could be one e and a two e and a three and a one e and a two e and a three and, which is dividing the three by four uh, subdivisions. You could also have a three by four where you divide by three, one and a two and a three and a one and a two and a three and. A. So the division of a beat. Has nothing to do with the time signature. It could be three by four, it could be five by four, or whatever. The time signature is a very uh, human-made construct, while beat division is maths at the end of the day. So let's look at a three by four arpeggio with dividing by two, one and two and three and one and two and three and then two. So it feels natural in this arpeggio and three and. that the high note or the high point of the chord visually is at the 1 and 2 and 3 and why not look at that and add one to one more to that party to the high notes or any time you play the high you could consider adding the low with the high and that creates the dyad 2 3 1 2 3 1 So this is a three by four arpeggio, normal without the uh, impact. One, two, three, 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 with impact. Two, three, one, 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 two. 
So let's try some more three by four stuff. Maybe a pattern like this. So I'm one and two and three and. So I'm trying to also highlight the end of the three. You could also kind of complement that impact in your left hand as a bass. Makes it a bit more aggressive. Or stick with a pulse. It's the same strategy used to create the impact. Now, if you go to maybe another division of three, which could be one, one, two, three, one, two, three. Now, I'm dividing the three by four into triplets. I'm dividing each beat into triplets, right? Give that triplet an impact. Or the other divisions of the beat could also be highlighted. One and a two and in that case the and of the two, two and a triplet. Check that out. Three, still walls. Two, three, more Indian walls if you think about it. of which beats you would like to highlight in your performance and to highlight it you have just this simple idea of adding a dyad instead of playing a single note and just before I conclude the lecture it'll be nice to see how you can do this on other time signatures what about five one two three four five one two three four five five by eight arpeggios are a lot of fun And it'll work really well with this technique. In fact, I learned this technique while trying to play arpeggios for odd meter or odd time signatures. So if I take five. You have to use this technique. It's almost mandatory, right? So hit, hit, hit means impact. Thakka, thakita. That gives me that one, two, one, two, three vibe. One, two. One, two, one, two, three, one, two. There we go. One, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two. You can flip that around and do one, two, three, one, two. And this sort of energy created on the piano is great in an ensemble, like a band or a choir or any group setting, because whoever is playing with you will feed off your sort of portrayed accents of importance which are whatever you project forward is what everyone's going to end up playing so the strumming pattern of the guitarist will change because of what you're doing or the guitar player will have no other choice so if you are propelling this idea forward then you you're kind of the leader of your pack, so to speak. They, are, they all have to follow you or they might have to propose something else because you've made your part extremely obvious and very impactful as opposed to just the usual cyclic arpeggio thing which everyone do. Okay, that's five. What if you want to do, what's next, seven? So, takadimi, four, takita. Tuck it, 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 tuck it
As you can see, I feel more at home with this because I learned this technique with odd time, not with even time. With even time or 4x4 four four time, I was just playing the usual run-of-the-mill arpeggios. Right, guys? So, just to conclude, let's boil this technique down to just its really mi its micro properties, which are, now if you take a chord, let's pin ourselves down to C minor. Now, if you want this impact, another way to look at it is look at your music in sets or groups of two, of three and four. Just tiny sets of these four, three numbers. So if you take sets of two and you want to create impact. There we go. Two. Packets of two. If you want to do sets of three and create an impact arpeggio, There we go. Takita. If you want to do sets of four and create an impactful arpeggio. And if you put that together, you'll realize that two meets three is not a big deal. One, two, one, two, three. And similarly, when we learnt it in the four by four world, if you took it, if you took the thresio, you could look at it as three meets three meets two. So you have a kind of a rhythmic figure for two, for three, for four, three. will allow you to I mean every time signature will be possible in this sense so, and time signatures when you look at 5 when you look at 7 don't get scared of the big number see how you can arrive at 5 or 7 or 9 or 13 just using smaller numbers for example what plus what equals 5 2 plus 3 even 3 plus 2 equals 5. Now that for music is different. 2 plus 3 is 5. 3 plus 2 is 5. It, it's different. Because what is that 2 and 3? Those are time units, isn't it? So time is 2 time going to 3 time. That's less, more versus more, less. That is different because music is focusing or functioning almost mainly with the time axis in mind. The time axis is moving forward. Right guys, so that was the lesson. We took four amazing chords, C minor, A flat major, F minor 6, also known as its cousin chord, which is D minor 7 flat 5, and then that nice, heavy, weighted G 7th voicing, which is used a lot in songs like Moonlight Sonata, which you must have heard. a lot of impact. So we took those chords, we learnt it in three different voicings, three different shapes. The notes are available for you to download, you can check it out. And then what did we do? We looked at an, a way to create impact arpeggios, as I'm calling it. An impact arpeggio is where you play a run-of-the-mill idea, whatever you normally do, but you add impact by adding a dyad to the structure. And at the end of the day, we have Three impactful arpeggios, which are in twos, which are in threes, and in fours. That's the lesson, pretty much. Right, guys? All the notes are available on our Patreon page. And if you like the lesson, do consider hitting the subscribe button and hitting the bell icon for regular notifications. It would help our channel go a long way. Thanks a lot for watching the video. And do watch similar related lessons which we've curated in our descriptions, in our end screens and cards and everywhere else in this video portal. We've done a lot of lessons on hand independence, on arpeggios, beat division, rhythm training in general. So please go through our YouTube channel and browse and see what you enjoy. Cheers. And if you... <clears throat>
So please feel free to go through our YouTube channel and browse around. And if you'd like something more structured, where all the notes are written in a book format uh, by me, you can consider going to nathanielschool.com and heading over to our members only section or doing a course with our school. Members only section will have structured video courses and you can also do a, a course at our school and learn with me or the other incredible faculty at our school who do guitars, who do vocals and drums and so on and so forth. Right? Thanks a ton for watching the video. Catch you in the next one. Cheers.